Here's what you need to find before anything else. A mentor. Everything else can wait. If you're a musician, there's almost nothing more important than a musical community. If you don't have one, you got to find one. If there isn't one where you live, maybe you can move somewhere else. Your musical community is everything. If you don't have one, you've got to find one. They'll be more important to your journey than any gatekeeper ever could be. You're not looking for some locked gate or a secret access point to success. You're not looking for some Wizard of Oz. You're looking for a community to make your music with. That community, those are the people you'll come up with. Those people, they're your Wizard of Oz. Here's a great idea. Find a friend who needs a great song and write it for them. Way better than trying to hook up with an established artist. Go for it. Music is a collaborative art. Technology enforces solitude. Look for ways to push back against the solitude. Collaborate. It might seem more comfortable to find a collaborator who has a lot in common with you, but sometimes the best partner is somebody very different from you. Plus it makes for a more interesting life. Here's a great thing to bring to a writing session. Compassion. Is your partner acting weird? Maybe they're just having a bad day. Major part of a producer's job, making sure the musicians get fed before things get ugly. If somebody says something that you do not understand, resist the urge to correct them. Correcting them is not going to help you understand it better. In a session, think twice before explaining why you like something or dislike something. If you don't like an idea, think of another way to go, a counterexample, an alternate path. Explaining rarely helps, even in real life. Explanations are unhelpful. Resist the temptation. Don't explain. Don't waste the time. Propose alternate ideas. How about this? How about this? That's the best way to affect the outcome. You gotta pick your spots, but sometimes the best two words to use in a collaboration are trust me. The word no is rarely necessary. Rarely necessary. I once read an interview with T-Bone Burnett in which he said that his main task in the studio was to love the people that he's recording. I didn't really understand it at first, but what a beautiful thing to say. If you love your collaborator's idea, they don't know that until you tell them. If you think your collaborator is awesome, they don't know that until you tell them. Just showing up at the session is not enough of an indication that you think they're awesome and you love their ideas. You gotta tell them. There's never enough credit to go around. To put it another way, if you add everybody's deserved credit together, it's always more than 100%. If you want to collaborate, you just have to get used to this. A lot of artists think that they can use their worst leftover songs to pitch to other people. Actually, you got to use your best one. Even if I'm writing a song for someone else to sing, I picture singing it myself. If it ain't good enough for me, it ain't good enough for them. Don't hoard your ideas. Your ideas are good now. If you hoard them for too long, they'll get smaller and smaller until eventually they'll just disappear. Use your ideas now. Record or write down your ideas. Do it right away. Don't think to yourself, if it's a good idea, I won't forget it. Believe me, I've forgotten a lot of ideas, and I'm pretty sure some of them were good. Record it or write it down right away. I don't think an idea needs to be perfect to be worth working on. I just want to be interested. Everything else follows from that. If you have an idea for a song that excites you, fills you with curiosity, makes you want to pursue it, then that's the idea to pursue. All other considerations are secondary to that one. If your collaborator has an idea, you have to try it out in reality. You can't try it out in your mind, in your imagination. There's no such thing. You have to try it in real life because it might surprise you when you hear it. Find the good in it. Your partner isn't crazy. There's a reason they like this idea. Try it. Don't say no to an idea until you've heard it. Try a lot of ideas. You've got to try a lot of ideas to find the ones that work. The ones that don't work aren't a waste of time. They're part of the process too. When I tell my non-musician friends how very many songs I write, and how very few of them turn out great, they're often puzzled. Why don't you only write the good ones, they ask. I say, because you need to write the song to find out if it's good. If you like it, then it's good. If you like the way it sounds, then it sounds good. Now play it for a friend. Sometimes it's so hard for me to know whether the thing I've just written is any good. That's when it's time to play it for a friend. Sometimes I don't even need them to tell me what they think. I play it for them and I already know. We make music even though we'll never really have the experience of hearing our own music. It's like we're flying blind. 
But we learn how to guess whether the song is good using other methods, and then we double check by playing it for an audience. Never forget about your audience, the very best source of critique and encouragement you'll ever find. An audience is the best source of feedback and insight you can get. Play your music for an audience. Play live. That's it. Play live. Every time I play a gig, in the minutes before the performance, I think to myself, why do I put myself through this? Such an anxious experience and nobody asked me to do it. It was my idea. Believe me, if gigs for you sometimes seem like a needlessly anxious ordeal, you're not alone. At some point in your music making, you're going to be faced with a decision between what you want to do and what you know is going to feel better for your audience. So how to decide? Who wins? Your desire or your audience? Well, let me ask you this. Are you planning to ask an audience to listen to this music? When in doubt, write a song for a specific purpose. Try writing a song to get your audience involved. Writing a song to get your audience involved is no worse a motivation than writing a song for your friend's wedding. And having a concrete purpose can take your ego out of the equation, which is often a good thing. Try writing a song to open your sets. It's like an overture to an opera or a musical. Something to get the audience involved and excited for what's about to happen. Picture the venue and the energy and the space around you and write a song to make the most of that. Imagine a really great concert. Think about the last 15 minutes of that imaginary concert. What would you wish to hear during the last 15 minutes of that concert? Now write three songs to fulfill that wish. Write a song to close your shows. It's like the finale to an opera or a musical. Mozart did it. You can do it too. Rehearsal is not only for songs. You can rehearse the spaces between the songs. You can rehearse the pedal or preset or instrument switches everyone needs to make between the songs. You can rehearse the physical movements you make to communicate with your audience. You can rehearse different ways to introduce your songs or not to introduce them. Rehearsal is the most underrated thing in music. Here's some advice from David Lynch about creativity. David Lynch says, meditate regularly. And the second thing I do is drink coffee. Okay, you've got your verse and your chorus. They sound great. Now fire your verse and turn the chorus into a verse and write another chorus. Okay, do yourself a favor. Your demo needs to be at least a half step higher in pitch and probably three or four BPMs faster. If you're writing a serious song and you're stuck, try satire. What's the silliest line you can think of for it? Writing lyrics by singing nonsense syllables? You're not alone, honey. It's nothing to be embarrassed about. Best not to let one bad line of lyrics hold up your song. Just pin it up that way, sing it a few times. It'll probably fix itself. Let me save you some trouble. If you use a word in the first verse, you can totally use it again. There's no rule about that. I learned a great rule about second verses from Christina Perry. It's this. There's no rules about second verses. I don't know why anybody listens to me. Whenever somebody tells me a songwriting rule, I immediately want to break it. I get so annoyed when I hear some experts saying stuff like, the hardest part of a song to write is the second verse. Relax, your song doesn't necessarily need a second verse, or a first one. Rules for writing pop hits are fine and dandy, as long as you're breaking them. Ask your mentors for some simple songwriting rules, and then carefully break them all. Be as thorough as you can. Don't forget that one of the main purposes of a song is to be a vehicle for someone's voice. If the singer sounds great when they're singing the song, that's a great song. This may not seem to be intuitively true, but you need to decide first that you're going to be a great songwriter, and you're going to write a great song, and then you can go ahead and write the great song. It's good to have a day-to-day -day songwriting routine, but don't forget that amidst the routine, it's also good to have a larger concrete plan in mind. Something ambitious. Something that might allow you to stretch. Aiming and missing brilliantly is what makes some artists brilliant. It's definitely not too late to start an audacious project that looks totally crazy on paper. If you're going to fly your freak flag, make sure it's really freaky. Otherwise, people are just going to say, oh, that's nice. Having trouble picking a single from your record? Here's how. 
Does one of them make you really uncomfortable and embarrassed? That's the one. Your audience wants to see you go overboard. Going overboard can be embarrassing. As a performer, one of your superpowers is being able to accept the embarrassment that goes along with going overboard. It's part of the job. Passion and fascination and unreasonable obsession are forms of vulnerability in your music. Vulnerability is the doorway into your music that you give to your listeners. A feeling of passionate discovery. The sense that something big is just around the corner. To be onto something unknown and important. That's what people want to hear in your music. You figuring something out. You learning how to do something you don't quite know how to do yet. That's what we want to hear. If you're already shameless, you might want to start working on your craft. If you've got your craft together, start working on your shamelessness. In music, there's often only a short distance between what the hell are they doing and this is amazing. It's a lucky musician who's just born with an artistic direction. Or maybe you can just pick an artistic direction and stubbornly stick to it. Personally, I think it's all right to have another song as the target or model when you're writing a new song. Why? Because usually you're going to miss, and sometimes by a wide margin. And eventually the new song is going to have to stand or fall on its own. The sounds like game is usually a waste of time. Don't worry if it sounds like something. Don't worry about whether it's been thought of before. As the poet said, the secret is to think of it again. If you make something cool, somebody's going to ask you to make another one just like it. So learn how to work in batches. If you have an idea that you really like, try to find a way to do that idea again and again. Do the idea a bunch of times. In the end, they'll all be different, and some of them might be magic. Repeat yourself all you like. I've said it before. It's called having a style. That's a good thing. Everybody says, just be you. Just sound like yourself. But sometimes it's hard to remember what you sound like. So, in those moments when you do remember what you sound like and how to be yourself, try to enjoy that. Those are good moments. Sometimes I console myself that every artistic project I loved a lot of time and effort to make. Don't worry too much about originality in the early stages. Sometimes the originality shows up later during the revisions. Learn how to revise. Take your work in progress and make it better. Revision, improvement, it's almost the most important part. Work on it till it's right. Yes, it would be nice to be done, but is it right? If it ain't right, then you gotta work on it till it's right. Usually if you work on something too long, you wreck it. That's why a deadline is a great thing to have. Two great things for a song, a commission, and a deadline. The commission takes the ego out of it, and the deadline makes sure you don't work on it for too long. Maybe you can finish that song today. Symmetry and balance. Chaos and confusion. Strong contrasts, vivid colors, simple composition. Your music needs these. Don't forget them while you're working on the details. Sometimes the best thing to add to a beautiful piece of music is an irritating noise. Seriously. If you give it beautiful form, you can start out with elements that other people find ugly. It'll still be beautiful. My friend and teacher Ron Jones says that the human ear can only understand two things at once, main thing and other thing. Don't forget, and I sometimes do, that the background can be as important as the foreground. Yes, what's in the background is important. But not as important as what's in the foreground. Sometimes brevity and simplicity are the most radical things to choose. I used to be so annoyed by obvious songs or works of art, which were applauded for doing each next obvious thing in turn. Now I just stand back and admire them. A great idea for a song is an idea so simple that 90% of songwriters would be embarrassed to suggest it. Sometimes when I'm working on a song, I get a strange feeling, like I'm walking on thin ice or I'm slightly embarrassed. This seems to happen when the idea I'm working on is so simple that I'm not sure there's enough idea there. And believe it or not, this is one of my best indicators that the idea that I'm working on is good enough and simple enough and real enough to make a good song. That strange feeling of, 
unease or embarrassment that it might not be complex enough. Don't fill in every space in your music. Emptiness, abstraction, sketchiness, suggestiveness. Learn how to leave things out and the listener's imagination will fill in the gaps for you. Your music doesn't have to include everything that you like. I love to listen to Mastodon, but nobody needs to hear me make those sounds. If a section of a song is causing you trouble, sometimes the best thing to do is cut it out. The song will probably be fine without it. When in doubt, leave it out. Use that mute button. It's what it's there for. When you're writing a song, make sure to stop when you're done. And then maybe also erase the last couple of things that you added. Make it briefer and briefer until you can't leave anything else out. The great country songwriter Craig Wiseman once told me this about writing lyrics. When in doubt, say what you mean. I think what he meant was it doesn't need to sound like lyrics or poetry as long as it sounds like what you mean to say. Anything that happens that's worth telling a friend about is worth writing a song about too. If there's a place you really love, mention it in your songs. You don't need to explain or tell anyone why. Just mention it. I think most of us would write better lyrics if we just made a list of the things we did today and a list of the things that make us upset or happy and then just randomly threw them into the song. The normal stuff of your daily life is perfectly good material for your art. What seems like the everyday junk to you might even be what makes you interesting. A good story needs at least a few major elements that, on closer inspection, make absolutely no sense. Songs are the same way. Sometimes I see something in a museum and I've got absolutely nothing to say. J.M.W. Turner, I love his paintings. Songwriters, do yourself a favor and listen to Rufus Wainwright's The Art Teacher. One of the characters in the song owns a Turner. I'm jealous of the character and the song. Just a pencil and a piece of paper. It's all you need to create an endless, unchanging ocean. It's all you need to create an endless, limitless galaxy or the sand on an endless beach. Just a pencil and a piece of paper. It's all you need to write a song to. Don't feel too bad if it seems like you're always having to start over. Success, failure, both will make you start over. That's just life. That feeling of continually having to start over. You might want to embrace that. Success, failure, both will make you start over. That's life. If you finish a good song and you think to yourself, that's the last good one I'll ever write, then you're a lot like me. I find the unsteerable nature of my inspiration maddening at times. Maybe you do too. I sometimes think of my creativity as a fountain in the back of my mind. It's always running, but I have to go to the back of my mind to get there. Sometimes when I'm in the front of my mind doing other stuff, I have this terrible feeling of missing out on the things happening over near the fountain, and I just want to get back there. Scientists talk about the rare exoplanets circling faraway suns with the Goldilocks conditions necessary for life. Not too hot, not too cold, not too dry, not too wet. As an artist, you need to determine for yourself what your own Goldilocks conditions are. X hours a week alone to make your art, day job with minimal demands on your imagination, lots of social life, very little social life, lots of family time, very little family time, lots of nature. So what are your Goldilocks conditions for making music? It's up to you. When I first moved to LA, I did a lot of pop songwriting sessions that any idiot could have predicted would be fruitless. But I did them because only an idiot would turn them down. I'm trying not to do those sessions these days. My friend Matt Hales says that certain song ideas are musical traps.
They never become songs. They exist only to use up your time. I'm trying to learn how to spot musical traps. If a song is taking you weeks and weeks to write, try setting it aside and working on a song that won't take as long. One good reason to do this is that life is short. Sometimes the best way to write a great song is to listen to a bunch of other great songs. And if you make a day of it and never write anything, then at least you've had a nice day of listening. Yes, you've got to put in the hours. But you've got to get outside too. Think of it as research if you must. By all means, keep banging away in the studio. But every once in a while, you might want to give yourself a change of scenery too. Given the choice between making music and having fun, I have to admit, generally speaking, I'd probably choose the music. But I've learned over time that it's a good idea for me to have some fun, so I do it. If you feel like you've run out of inspiration, it may be that you need to live life for a little while. You can't get blood from a stone. Go out and have some fun. Get out there and be amazed by something. You gotta get outside yourself once in a while. You can always come back to yourself later. All of this conscious thought and effort in preparation for the music emerging unconsciously and effortlessly. Even the greatest, most brilliant songwriters out there can't force a song to happen. They all have to surrender to the process, one way or the other. My favorite quote about music is from Wayne Shorter in the film Jocko. Wayne Shorter says, the challenge of jazz is to improvise and be in the moment. That moment equals eternity. The music that results is the greatness of the human being. Instead of saying, there's never enough time to make all the music I want to make, I'm trying to learn how to say, there's exactly the right amount of time to make the piece of music I'm working on right now. You're not gonna believe me when I tell you this, but when you write your hit song, the best part, the best feeling, is still gonna be the first couple minutes after you finish, and you know it's great. As you get better and better at what you do, you're gonna to need to learn an extra skill, how to accept a compliment. If someone tells you you're great or your work is beautiful, don't tell them, no, I suck. You're just telling them they're wrong. How about, thank you, or that means a lot coming from you, I appreciate that. You might have to practice it a couple of times. Your reward for making something cool will often come in the form of a reward for making some other cool thing at some other time. If you show somebody a great song that you've written, chances are what they'll say to you is, can you make one of those for me too? There are a lot of rewards for doing good work, but the main reward is the chance to do more good work. So you better be sure that the work you're doing is the work you want to do, because they're going to ask you for more. Thank you for letting my music into your lives and for your own creativity. Let's do more.